Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life and we're here today with another Lexio Divina. This is our second look at the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 9 verses 10 through 13. Let's dive in and begin as we always do with a prayer before the crucifix and so many books here and um sorry the sign of the cross and the prayer before the crucifix so many books that looked like our journal today you may want to get a sticker or some kind of artwork or maybe a special this book has no ribbons i could easily put some fun ribbons in here to tell it apart i know i feel like i need to do something i keep losing it need to do something to decorate it out so i know it's for lexio Domina. let us begin again for up till now we have done yeah nothing in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Sume glorioso Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi, et da mihi fidem rectum, spem certin et caritatem perfectum, domini ut facium tuum sanctum, et verax man datum. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Right next to me. I can't lose it this time. Again, I'm going to repeat these passages three times, pausing just briefly between them for you to enter into some meditation, whether you're imagining yourself in the scene or different words are jumping out at you every time you read it or phrases, whatever that looks like for you, feel free to pause the video whenever you want if you need more time. Again, it's great to journal these in a journal. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, but it is a handy tool to go back and look at. And the apostles, when they were returned, told Jesus all they had done. And taking them, he went aside to his desert place, apart, which belongeth to Bethsaida, which when the people knew, they followed him. And they, he received them and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and he healed them who had need of healing. Now the day began to decline, and the twelve came and said to him, Send away the multitude, that going into the towns and villages round about, they may lodge and get victuals, for we are here in a desert place. But he said to them, Give you them to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fishes, unless perhaps we should go and buy food for all this multitude. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all they had done, and taking them, he went aside to a desert place apart, which belongeth to Bethsaida. And when the people knew, they followed him, and he received them, and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and healed them that needed healing. Then the day began to decline, and the twelve came and said to him, Send away the multitude, that going into the towns and villages round about, they may lodge and get victuals. For we are here in a desert place, but he said to them, give you them to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fishes, unless perhaps we should go and buy food for all this multitude. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all they had done. And taking them, he went aside into a desert place a part which belongeth to Bethsaida, which when the people knew, they followed him, and he received them and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and he healed them who had need of healing. Now the day began to decline, and the twelve came and said to him, Send away the multitude, that going into the towns and villages round about, they may lodge and get victuals, for we are in a desert place. But he said to them, Give you them to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fishes, unless perhaps we should go and buy food for all the multitude. You can see um, this has been affecting me like literally every time I've read it. Um, I'm just in, in a place right now and asking you to pray for our clergy, our priests, our deacons, our bishops, archbishops, cardinals, the Pope, and you can take that all the way down to our altar servers if you'd like, even though if they're not technically clergy, let's take it all down and then let's flow out to Christ's body, which is the church. But let's let's start with the, the priests. Why do I say that? Here is Jesus looking at them. 
He's taken them out into a, they're in a desert place. They followed Jesus out. Um, they went apart and he followed them. They followed them out and they were in a desert place and there was no food for them or a place to stay in that desert place. Don't we feel that sometimes in this world, in this day and age, there's no place for us. And we feel like there's no place to stay and there's no food to eat. I think the people knew there was, they had no need of that. You don't hear the people demanding it. You hear the apostles getting nervous and saying, there's no place for them to sleep and we don't have enough food to share. And I think Jesus is like, really? Really? All this? And you've just gone to those towns and preached and healed and you think you have nothing for these people. I I do wonder if the grace of God was just sufficient. He didn't even probably have to do this miracle of the loaves and fishes. Have you ever considered that? Did he even need to do that? You hear about some saints who subsisted on just the Eucharist for decades. These people probably didn't need to eat or sleep. They had the bridegroom with them. Jesus was there. They what what else would they need? I wonder that. I wonder what that was like. And I've talked about this before so many times on retreats. Um, <laughs> women always say, I kind of just want to take a blanket and go to the Adoration Chapel and sleep, which is kind of funny because we talk about the Adoration Chapel making a holy hour using the quote from the Bible. Could you not just stay with me one hour? And it's it sounds like, you know, he's reprimanding the disciples who fell asleep in the garden and could not stay with him awake with him one hour they couldn't watch with him one hour and i think what so many of us are saying is we just want to be in your presence i don't care if i'm awake or asleep i just want to be in your presence jesus that is enough for me i need nothing else and so i wonder these people would they have needed that did they need beds did they need food or would they have just curled up at the feet of the Lord and been happy and content and peaceful that one night. And what a blessing and what a gift. And I'm not saying that he shouldn't have done the the multiplication of the loaves, that great miracle. Wonderful. And he fed them. And I do still think though that it's it's a symbol of what he was doing and what he was calling the apostle to do. We see that much later in after the resurrection when he says to Peter, feed my sheep, right? He's not talking about, go. you know, Peter doesn't run and go, oh, oh, well, you've got a couple of fishes already. Let me go load the boat up and I'll, I'll take it to the multitude. He doesn't say that that time. He doesn't say, oh, let me go get, okay, sheep, I'll go get a whole bunch of grass and, and hay and whatnot and I'll go. I'll go pasture these sheep that where you wear the sheep, Jesus. Like he doesn't say that anymore. After the resurrection, he gets it. When Jesus said, feed my sheep, he's like, oh, yes, Lord. Right? It's different. It hits you differently. And I don't think they're there yet. And are we there yet? So many times we talk about charity to the poor and a of course, a great part of Lent is, you know, praying, fasting, and almsgiving, giving to the poor, literally feeding the poor, right? And we have the fish fries, which are often low cost. And if a poor person wanders in, I've never heard of anybody turned away. It could happen, but I've never heard of that. Um, so that's literally feeding the poor. And that is a great and mighty thing. But in that community where your church is, in your parish, which is a geographical area, not just that building and not just the people who sign up and register to be there, but is that whole geographical area is your parish. Have you been feeding them? Have you been telling them about Jesus? Have you given them that peace that surpasses all? Sleep sounds great. Sleep yeah, but the peace that surpasses all. Like, why do we want sleep? Because we want the peace that surpasses all. So many of us do get that in a physical sleep. But we're talking about the spiritual sense here as well. How many times have we offered that to people? I have the peace within me. And you can see I'm still flustered by something that happened this week, which is more complicated and I can get to another time. I, I am, again, immensely immensely grateful for my spiritual direction program that made me take a retreat this year um has to be somewhere in these two years and i took that that long retreat 
I don't think I could get through this time. This has been, this is, it's only been two months and it's been a long, long and wild ride, about, about a month and a half that this has been going on. And, um, I, I, I think, I, I think without this, I, I seem upset now, but I just can't imagine having done it without having had that retreat and really going into the the love of God and really exploring Jesus as brother and St. Francis, my big brother, St. Francis, really exploring those um, without that time. I don't know. So I'm going to look at you friends and I haven't heard of any priests watching this, but I know a number of secular Franciscans do. And so I am going to look at you and say, give you them to eat. And friends, a lot of you I know are invalid, can't leave the house. And so how are you able to do that? If you have the funds, of course, you could physically give to um, poor programs, to your parish poor, poor box. You can also donate straight to your parish, to religious ed programs, to evangelization programs at your parish. You could sponsor some free tickets to the fish fry, right? You could also do that. I've heard of people giving... um. If you have an exceptionally generous priest who likes to buy meals for the homeless or something, um, they, I heard of one time for his birthday, everybody gave him gift cards to various coffee shops and restaurants around town so that when he ran into somebody who was hungry, he was free to give them those gift cards. So that's another fun thing that you could do. Um, but as well, praying, praying for your parish, praying for your parish priest, praying for the people in your parish. This is a ministry I wanted to start and it got shot down. Um, but especially if you're an invalid, not not exclusively, but especially, or you're in a nursing home and you can't necessarily get out to the parish or there's not a parish near you. Uh, maybe the priest only comes every, every month or every two months, right? Get a hold of that parish bulletin. Whatever you have to do, if you ask, somebody in the parish will probably mail it to you. You can probably do that. Um, I know they love to send it to email and that's not always the easiest for everyone to receive it, but they may be able to, to just mail you a physical one or you could get a parishioner to even print one from the web. And I want you to pray over the ministries. You're going to have the list of the clergy. You're going to have the list of all the, the heads of committees, right? You're going to have the list of, like if they're looking for people to help out in religious ed, you're going to have that. You're going to have all the events on there. You can pray over all those people and ministries in your parish that they will be able to give them them, to, to give you them to eat, right? So that they will be equipped with all the graces they need to do the work that needs to get done in your parish. And I don't want you to think that that's a lesser than ministry. I think that is an amazing ministry. Praying the parish bulletin is something that is so important. It is so wildly important. You have no idea, no idea how important that is. And I don't ever want you to feel less than if that's all you can do. Do it. If you have a parish that you went to years ago that is still in your heart, ask them to send you the parish bulletin. You can give them a donation. What is it? Like $20 a year. So they'll be able to mail it to you or something like that. You know, think of it. Um, but you can and say, I'll pray for you. I tell you, those people will be eternally grateful. They may not even know you're doing it now, but they'll know it at, at you know, the big judgment day when we get to see how everyone's lives and decisions affected us. They're going to see that and they're going to be blown away. You are going to be blown away with the fruits of all that labor. You're going to be blown away, friends. I guarantee. And you are just going to be overwhelmed. So consider that as a little ministry, the Parish Bulletin Ministry. So I'm excited to hear you may not have gotten anything like that. When you, Yeah, the book I sat next to me just went flying. Um, you may not have been inspired or moved at all in that reflection. Go ahead and put your reflection below. Let me know if this has touched you, if this worked for you. Um, I need to go. I will talk to you later. Um, may God bless you and keep you. May make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the good Lord bless you. Nomine Patris, Affiliate, Spiritus Sancti. Amen.